My wife and I just got back from the Mitten Homesteaders Conference in Central Michigan, and while we were there selling our biochar and tomato plants, we bought 15 heirloom apple trees. The problem is, out here, I don't have space for the apple trees yet. I haven't quite finished clearing out this back forest that we're going to turn into an orchard here. This whole section over here and all this brush has many large, giant brush piles in it from the treetops of all the trees we cut down in this back half acre, and I got to finish collecting those up, making sure they're dry, and cooking them into biochar. So I'm going to show you that process and just what it looks like. All right, we're back at it here. I wanna show you the brush pile and the char pit over here. So all the brush that I'm clearing out, we're using for biochar. Basically everything that I didn't want to save to either use or sell for fuel wood, we're using for some biochar. So I got this pile here so far. Give you a little scale here. At least I had easy soil to dig the pit. Pretty sandy stuff. So we've got this pile of, of sticks here, pretty good sized pile. And I've got a pile there, pile there under some green, a pile there under some green again, and another pile right there under some green. So it's about time that I can light this sucker up and start burning this char. And I do have Bible study tonight, so I probably should get going on it. Now, now that I'm walking out, you can see the pig pen here. Boy, they did a great job clearing that out for me over there versus over there, which, I mean, that's what this area would have been without the pigs. They're doing great. They're happy. They're doing their job. Clearing the land for me. Good job, pig roonies. There's a good flame now. I gotta move the camera quick because she's getting hot. So, the auto cam Now this fire is uh, not burning the greatest yet. I figured that. I mean, it's we had rain last night. The wood's a bit wet. It's drying out pretty quick in the weather here, but I've got to go a little slower at, at adding the fuel, at least at this stage, because I really need that to get good and hot. I want to see very little smoke in this cooking setup. 
Not too much smoke, but also not too much flame because that means it's burning too fast. I want just enough flame on the top, which we're getting about two right now. If you take a look there, you can see the there's a little bit of smoke. There's a lot more flame, but the flame isn't very even inside the pit yet. I need that whole pit to start burning into coals. When I get a little bit of coals in the bottom, then I can really start cooking this stuff fast. Combustion temperature of wood is roughly around 450 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the normal temperature that your lump charcoal is cooked at, but this biochar is usually cooked at 800 to 1500 degrees Fahrenheit within that range. Once you start getting the, the higher amounts of flame, which is the gas is combusting, the, the auto combustion temperature of that gas is more like 1000 degrees, and that easily can help you get the combination of heat from the coals and the, the flame together to reach. I mean, I've seen it reach 2,000 degrees in a wood fire before. Uh, my friend Mark Baker up north, he gets his charcoal cooked at right about 1,500 degrees, and I try to do mine closer to 1,000, just because it's, it's way more manageable for this open pit kiln. Now to throw more wood in the fire. While my biochar is cooking over there, I thought I'd go uh, feed the pigs a little something. So, let me show you how I feed the pigs. Here, yeah, piggy, 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 piggy. That's how I feed the pigs. Look at them little guys. Wagging their tails, so darn happy to get green tree leaves from the red maple. Num num, eat them up. It's it's astonishing just how much these heritage breeds, like these, these various, the Asian heritage hogs here. These suckers, it's astonishing how much they can really get out of eating green fodder like this. This, this tree browse, it's high protein. These maple leaves are something like a 16% protein. And it sure fills their bellies and they sure love it. Darn good for them. And it's free. There we go. <clears throat> That's a little bit better now. Got the bigger stuff in there. Staying nice and hot. A little bit of char on top. That's fine. But it is to the, about to the point where I should put a little bit more wood on top. It's, it's burning hot but a little bit slow yet because it's still kind of wet wood. I don't want too much char on top though. I need to choke this flame down a little bit and slow her down. Now, too much flame means that I'm going to be getting a too much ash in my burn. I won't end up with as much charcoal as I'm hoping to get out of it. I'll have more ash. That might mean that I'll have to accept a little bit lower temperature than I really would like in this char because it is a little wet, so it, it's still going to be well within that 850 degree range to make good charcoal, biochar. And still going to produce pretty well for me. I just got to watch it. The big thing is don't let the flame get too tall. Don't let the flame get too tall and with a lot of this brushy stuff I got to smack it down so that it burns a little more evenly. You can get too much air in there so I got to smack it down a little bit. Now this here is absolutely too choked out. Look at all the smoke there. You don't want to see that. That is a bad burn that's not going to make a nice absorbent porous char like we want. But if I just wait a minute, just wait. We already see, I see a little flame coming back. It's starting to clear. When you have good wood, decent enough wood and good aeration, this goes pretty quick. All right, I'd love to let it burn a little more, but I gotta go to Bible study and see how she goes.
Boy, that's some hot steam. That's some real hot steam.